Get NFL Sunday ticket at its lowest price ever and watch every game every Sunday. Take your NFL experience to even greater heights with NFL Sunday Ticket Deluxe, which gives you Red Zone, bringing you the final yards from around the league along with minute-to-minute -minute NFL fantasy updates. Call us at 601-8992 to sign up today. The scene outside the Ministry of Education this morning as teachers demanded to see the minister. Good evening Bahamas and thanks for joining us at MB12. The Bahamas Union of Teachers faces off against the Ministry of Education in protest of two high school principals they want removed. In the wake of the police commissioner's new crime plan, officers say they want a pay raise. The National Security Minister responds to concerns about the shift system, a new Miss Bahamas crowned, and just how much the Bahamas will spend to host the IAAF World Relays in 2014 and 2015. We have those stories and much more coming up tonight. I'm Christina McNeil, and your MB12 starts right now. for joining us. Action by members of the Bahamas Union of Teachers intensified this morning after scores of teachers met at BUT headquarters, then marched to the Ministry of Education in an attempt to meet Minister of Education Jerome Fitzgerald, only to be locked out of the building. Jasmine Bonamy was there for all the action and filed this report. More than 100 teachers marched to the Ministry of Education this morning to send a very strong message. BUT President Belinda Wilson says this is only the first step in a series if their issues are not addressed. Led by Wilson and her executive team, the teachers first met at BUT headquarters where she outlined the plan of action the union plans to take over the next few weeks. From there, they marched along Thompson Boulevard only to find security had locked them out of the ministry's headquarters. For more than an hour, Wilson and the teachers stood outside the entrance chanting, shouting and singing. The union's actions came hours after Minister of Education Jerome Fitzgerald released a press statement late last night, indicating all teachers must report to work on time this morning or have their pay cut. Union leaders are upset over the Ministry of Education's refusal to remove principals from their posts, one at a school in Grand Bahama and another in New Providence. Today, Wilson said the union is not pleased with the ministry's handling of the issue. And for that reason, the BUT is taking action. We assembled here today in solidarity and unity to show Minister Fitzgerald that we ain't never scared. Yeah. And he threw, he threw out some threats this morning about what consequences teachers will have. Well, since we could not have the meeting on the campuses, we brought the meeting to him. And we are waiting him to come down and address us so that we can know about these policies which he has changed overnight that we're not aware of. Without consultation with the union. And it's only a little top up today. We only topping him up today. When we come out now, we coming out in full force. Only a little top up today. Also at this morning's demonstration was NCTUB President Jenny Isaacs Dotson and Bahamas Catering and Allied Workers Union President Nicole Martin. Isaacs Dotson says the BUT has the full support of the NCTUB and thousands of its members. She also strongly criticized Minister Fitzgerald's handling of industrial relations. Why did the Ministry of Education get involved? Thank you. Why did the Ministry of Education call the Royal Bahamas Police Force? Yes. Who should be dealing with crime yes. in this country? Yes. Deal with the crimes and murders in this country. Yes. Instead, you want to lock out yes. one of your partners in education, yes. the Bahamas Union of Teachers. 
and its president, right. the Bahamas Union of Teachers, which is one of the oldest unions in this country. We ain't going nowhere. We ain't going nowhere. So it is in your best interest. We call on your colleague, the Honorable Shane D. Gibson, who knows what industrial relations should be like to speak to you and educate you, because obviously you're not educated. <laughs> on industrial relations. We have a labor college, maybe you can attend. And police were not taking any chances this morning as scores of armed police officers were dispatched to the Ministry of Education to ensure the crowd did not get out of control. Around 10.15, the crowd of teachers and union officials dispersed with many of the teachers heading back to school. But Wilson, Isaacs, Dotson and a handful of union executives headed to the office of the Prime Minister for a meeting with the nation's leader. Back at the Ministry of Education, Fitzgerald met with the press, insisting he would not meet with union officials until Wilson puts an end to the union's actions. He also promised that the ministry will cut the pay of teachers who did not show up to work on time this morning. I want to make it clear that from the ministry's standpoint, we have not breached the collective bargaining agreement. And as such, there is no cause of action with regard to an industrial dispute or any industrial action. Let me make this clear. I will not sit down with the president of the union under these circumstances. When all of the teachers are in school and the school is calm, we can sit down and have a mature discussion over some of the concerns that she's raised. But I can assure you and President Wilson and the union, I will not meet with anyone under these conditions. And if they want to have meetings, they can have their meetings on weekends, they can have them before 8 o'clock, they can have them after 3 p.m. But between 8.45 and 3 p.m., I expect all teachers to report to their respective schools. There is no cause of action here. There is no cause which they are fighting. This is just the union wanting us to remove two teachers which they do not have the support for. Do not, uh, uh, sorry, moving two principals which they do not have the support for. And to go on this just is irrational and it's unwarranted. Fitzgerald insisted that the ministry will not be removing those principals and added that since his tenure as education minister, he has been very accommodating to BUT leaders, but says he will not budge on this matter. Reporting for NB12, I'm Jasmine Bonamy. Well, despite the large crowd of teachers drawn to the Ministry of Education this morning, education officials reported that there were no major disruptions at schools across the country. According to Fitzgerald, 95 to 97 percent of teachers in the public school system reported to work on time. He added that at the two schools in the middle of the dispute, Anatol Rogers in New Providence and Maurice Moore Primary in Grand Bahama, only 10 percent of teachers did not show up. I can report that about 95 to 97 percent of our teachers reported to work this morning and I want to commend those teachers who did and who took their solemn responsibility of delivering quality education to our children seriously. Officials say given that they were aware teachers might demonstrate, the ministry implemented contingency plans so that school would not be interrupted. The government employs about 4,000 teachers across the country. 2,400 of those teachers are stationed at schools in New Providence. With regard to the schools that are in question here, namely Anatole Rogers and Maurice Moore, I can tell you that this morning only about 10% of the teachers in those two schools did not report to work on time this morning. So it really goes to and begs the question, what is all of this really about? As I stated from my initial statement, we were satisfied in the ministry, I was satisfied in the ministry that with regard to the two schools in question, the principals had the support of the PTA, the school board, and the majority of administrators and teachers. 
And so there was no need to remove the principles. Well, National Security Minister Dr. Bernard Nottage is urging police officers to know their role. He was responding to the Police Staff Association's criticisms of government's new crime plan, which calls for officers to work longer hours. He insisted that when an emergency occurs in the country, police officers must be prepared to go above and beyond the call of duty. Fonik Toot reports. National Security Minister Dr. Bernard Nottage is defending government's new crime plan, which entails placing police officers on 12-hour work shifts. Though he's willing to meet with the Police Staff Association, Nottage made it clear it's his duty to consult with the Commissioner of Police, not police officers. I'm the Minister for National Security, and my articulation is with the Commissioner of Police. I have been in discussions with the police force for months now, on strategies to um, reduce crime and violence in our country. I have a country where people are afraid, they are fearful, I have to act. Those actions blindsided PSA Executive Chairman Dwight Smith, who asserted that officials should have the common respect to involve the association before immediately placing all police officers on New Providence on 12-hour shifts. However, Nottage pointed out the PSA is an association, not a trade union. I need the policeman to be prepared to do his job, to do it well, and every policeman knows that when there are emergencies in the country, that they may be required to go beyond what the normal working hours or working conditions are. The new crime plan, prompted by a dramatic increase in murders, also included doubling the number of police officers on the front line and deploying 150 Defense Force officers to perform desk duties normally carried out by police. However, Nottage insisted the Defense Force would not suffer as a result. In fact, he says they're already seeing results. I think most people would agree that they have been more visible, that there are more cars on the road apparently, that there are officers within the communities, the hotspots, and we had a reasonably satisfactory weekend with respect to crimes of violence. And that's not the end of it, according to Nottage. We have a number of, of matters that we are bringing to the table, and it may be that as we bring in some of those things, that the need for the extra um, hours and numbers of policemen may, may change. But let's work together at this point. When asked how long police officers will be on 12-hour shifts, Nottage says as long as it takes to get this country's crime problem under control. Reporting for NB12, I'm Vonnie Toot. And the head of the Police Staff Association says though his team has some issues with the 12-hour shift system, officers will work it. But while that's happening, he would like the government to look at how police are compensated in general. He noted that it's been over a decade since there was an across-the-board pay raise for those who keep our nation safe. This is something that we need, we're going to talk to the government about because we're getting ready to go in to introduce an EVAC program next year. National insurance has gone up. This a lot of the cost of living has gone up and we have not looked at salary increases yet for police. I think it's now 11 years that we have not had a salary increase. And so that just that alone will cause the need for private engagement to be in uh, to, to foster up more jobs for police officers because of what, it, what actually really is going on. I just think that we, we, we just need to sit around the table. Well, government is still determined to hold a constitutional referendum in November, but it may be the first of several. Prime Minister Perry Christie yesterday telling our news team that his administration will have to hold several referenda so the public is not confused by too many ballot questions. He indicated that issues of gender discrimination will likely be addressed in the November referendum, but he wants to gain consensus within his government and from the opposition before the issues are brought forward. Last week, Free National Movement Deputy Leader Loretta Butler-Turner questioned whether government was taking the matter seriously and would launch another rushed referendum process. But the Prime Minister is suggesting yesterday that would not be the case this time. In July, the Constitutional Commission made 73 recommendations for constitutional reform. The government has yet to announce which of those recommendations will be placed before the public for consideration. Coming up, the Bahamas Christian Council prepares to wage a national campaign against crime.